thank you all for being here, first of all. I know there's a lot of, there are a lot of great sessions going on right now, and, and I appreciate you being here. Um, again, my name is Ryan Hopkins. I'm the president and founder of an organization called the Public Square Project, and it's a new uh, government watchdog organization, which I'll explain a little bit more about. But the reason I'm here today is that the Public Square Project also publishes a new citizen journalism platform called the Pittsburgh Citizen. Some of you, I don't know if anybody, has anybody seen The Citizen or read anything on The Citizen? Thank you, a few in the back there. We're only a little more than a month old, so we're sort of trying to get the word out, and I'll explain what, what, the, what The Pittsburgh Citizen is, what it's all about, and how you guys can get involved. Um, and really, uh, what this session is about is answering sort of the three questions we have up there, sort of what is citizen journalism, um, why it, it really matters in today's media landscape, and sort of how people can, can do it, how they can be involved in, in citizen journalism. Um, and so with that, I will um, go over and change the slide. But I want to ask the question, um, what is citizen journalism? And you probably have all heard that term, and you've often probably all seen it in quotation marks in various places in the web, because nobody really, um, nobody, we're sort of, working toward what a definition of what that means. But I'd like to hear first what you guys think, what do you think citizen journalism means? Anybody? Yeah. Is journalism performed by someone not working for an organization? That's right, yeah, there you go. That's that's certainly part of the definition. Uh, generally, citizen journals, non-professionals. Um, any other part, I think it's Steve? When I, when I tweet that I'm getting tear gassed on 38. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of those things, you know when you see it, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah there's, there's an example of, of citizen journalism. And, and, and with the G20, we certainly saw uh, a lot of that going on, a lot of the, the tweeting and, and tear gassing, unfortunately. <laughs> um, anybody else want to throw a definition out there? OK, well, there's, there's a definition that I, that's great. My wife Elaine, everybody. Um, there's there's a definition that I particularly like because I think it's, and if you want to the next slide, here it is. Here it's uh, when the people formerly known as the audience employ the press tools they have in their possession to inform one another. That's citizen journalism, and that's not my definition. That's a definition by uh, a journalism professor at NYU named Jay Rosen, who is a uh, who has been a huge proponent of citizen journalism since this movement sort of started to, to get going. So there are really three parts of this definition that I want to highlight here. The first one is the first one that's up here now, people formerly known as the audience. So not just uh, non-professionals or not just um, people who have never done this for pay, but really all of us, everybody out there who has consumed media, the, formerly the audience, that's who we're talking about, people actually do this. The second part here is the, the press tools. Um, some of these will be very familiar. Um, when we say press tools, we mean things like um, audio, video, writing, those kinds of basic hardware tools. But also, uh, press tools means those things, um, the, way, the way we use the definition, means those things that, that journalists typically employ. Um, you know, interviewing, uh, objectivity. It could be all of these different kinds of, of tools, tangible tools and intangible tools. And the third part of this definition is to inform one another. It's to provide some new perspective, um, some new information uh, that is not otherwise available out there in the media landscape. So really, the way we think of, of citizen journalism is, is sort of filling the gaps between what's out there and what's available, diversifying the voices that are out there. And I think this definition encapsulates that in a very simplistic, but, but also in a way that, that allows people to sort of define for themselves what, what citizen journalism is. So, with that, what, is, what does it mean? What does citizen journalism look like then when, when we're out there doing it? Um, this may seem like a, a self-evident question, but, but perhaps not. So next slide. So really, um, you know, you might be creating media um, on your own. That's you go to a city council meeting, you write up what happened on your blog. That, that could be certainly part of citizen journalism. You can augment media that's already out there. And we saw a lot of this during the G20. There was a ton of traditional media coverage of the G20, but what people were doing out there, they were they were reporting events from their own perspective. They were augmenting those things that were already out there. And the third part of this is uh, fact-checking media. 
Um, I was in a great um, session this morning with uh, David D'Angelo, um, talking about political blogging. What he was doing, he was talking about fact-checking media, and that's a form of citizen journalism, too. Um, if you create augment or fact-check media on your own or collaboration with others, that's what we often see. That's, that's sort of the oper operationalization of, of, of that definition that we saw uh, previously. So, next slide. So there are many different ways to do this. Um, so you know, we may have some sense now of what, what citizen journalism is, what it looks like. Um, but of course, there's no one way to do citizen journalism. There's sort of a spectrum of how it's done. And I, um, I found this slide and also augmented a little bit myself to show um, sort of the spectrum of how citizen journalism works and how it's being used currently. So on the one side is you sort of have the traditional media sources uh, using citizen journalism to, to enhance what they do. And on the other side of the spectrum, you sort of have, um, you sort of have total amateur control of what's going on, people creating it for themselves. And so, um, you know, where you fall along the spectrum sort of determines, um, you know, what, what kind of citizen journalism you're creating or what, what you know, where, where you are on the spectrum kind of helps us understand a little bit better about, um, about what kind of citizen journalism you may be doing. So we're all sort of familiar with, you know, um, over here on this end, traditional media. Sure, no problem. So we're all sort of familiar on this end of, uh, you know, looking at traditional, let's take a look at like the Post-Gazette, for instance. You know, sort of have total professional control of what's going on over the content, but they may sort of open it up a little bit to audience participation. So you often see, we, we, we don't argue about this much anymore, but you do see a lot of controversy about should we allow comments, should comments be moderated. I think it's been generally, generally accepted that comments are going to be a part of anything that's out there in the media today. So I think you see that less. Add-on reporter is, is sort of a, um, we're doing a story on the, how the economic crisis is affecting people. Tell us your story about how, how the economic crisis is, is affecting you. But this is still sort of part of, of the, the traditional media sources. Um, we have sort of crowdsourced data projects. We're going to come back to that in a minute. It's still, still on the pros and charge side, but this is a, a really exciting area of citizen journalism and something that that, um, that you can get involved with. Um, the next one, uh, I like this term, I found it, citizen blog house. And this means sort of newspapers and others creating a section of their website devoted completely to um, blogs, um, you know, non-traditional voices, people who don't work for the, for the um, paper doing this. And I have an example of this today. An example of this, you look at the, at the Post-Gazette website, they have a whole list of blogs now that uh, that it is on that, that you can access through their site, and they, they tag it here as community voices. I make it clear that this is not part of the Post Gazette, but it's it's sort of a, uh, an encroaching of this um, of the audience into traditional media sources. So um, go back, go back. Actually, there we go. Um, so as we're moving further down this spectrum, the next one is independent news and information sites. Um, th this is sort of, we're adding a little more uh, citizen control into what's going on. And here you might be, you're probably familiar with, with these kinds of sites. Huffington Post, I would put into this category, independent news analysis, or depending on your political bent, the Drudge Report. Um, so, you know, again, this is, this is sort of, we're heading down that, that path toward, toward more amateur control. Um, Another, another way that you see citizen journalism used, again, getting closer to amateur control here, is a, a hybrid of the uh, professionals and citizen journalists together. If you want to click through that. And one of the, the best examples of this is, I don't know if any, you guys ever seen Oh My News? It's a South Korean site, and they were one of the first um, sort of citizen, they were one of the first to incorporate citizen journalists into their regular reporting rotation. They're based out of South Korea. And I think it's one of the best examples of professional journalists and citizen journalists working together. Um, then we get down into, now we get sort of really serious about, uh, well, here's, I actually have another example of professionals and citizens working together. This is called the Gotham Gazette. And it's a site in New York City that is, um, covers 
news and public policy in, in New York City. In fact, it's the inspiration for what we're doing here with the Pittsburgh Citizen. Um, and they, they incorporate professionals in a different way. They have sort of have subject area specialists, where you might have a, 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 an expert, a professor in public finance, working with a, a citizen journalist who's interested in writing about something, and they'll, they'll be your editor. So I thought that was a really good example of, of professionals and citizen journalists working together. Um, and then we get into um, heading further down the spectrum of amateur control. Um, we sort of get to these sites that I think are really the heart of citizen journalism. What, what most people think of when they think of citizen journalism, and that's these are, are, are sites that are completely written by, by non-professional journalists, where there is some editing, but a pretty minimal editing, and where you can you know um, go to their site and, and be published pretty quickly. So this is now public. I don't know if anybody has ever used now public or or been involved with with uh, them, but you know as you can see right here, um, you can just go to their site. Um, click I want to write something, and you can get started. They have, their focus is much more national and international in scope. They have people from around the country, around the country and around the world writing for them. Um, so that's a good example of, of sort of what's going on in citizen journalism right now. Like one, one more click. And Ground Report is something that's very similar too. Um, and this has kind of more of an international focus. But again, if you're interested in writing about anything that's going on in the world, this is a place where you can get involved. And that ground report, uh, they offer some money based on how many clicks you get through your site. So, so th this is a, a really interesting model too. Um, this, this, is a, this is a brand new one that was just debuted last month. It's called The Rapidian. It's based in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it's a site that's completely written and reported by citizen journalists. And this is almost exactly what we're doing here with the Pittsburgh Citizen. Um, it's, it's, interest, it's very interesting the way they work. They make you work with an editor for your first three stories. Um, you get feedback, you get edited, and then you sort of graduate to being uh, a senior uh, reporter. And you can upload stories and video and audio and, um, and you know, uh, really write regularly for this. This, uh, this service. So I, this is being funded by the uh, Knight Foundation, which is a, a community journalism foundation. They fund a bunch of different kinds of media projects, everything from NPR to small websites like this. And uh, this is going to be a really interesting model to, to watch in the future. Um, and then we get to sort of the final end of complete amateur control, where we have um, some of you may have seen or even edited or been involved with Wiki News, and this is where it's completely unedited. You know, a lot of people are familiar with this, this model with Wikipedia, but now it's being applied to the news with Wiki News. So, so what I, I guess what I wanted to demonstrate with this is that when we use the term citizen journalism, it's really not just one thing. It's really this wide spectrum of, of amateur control of the news or non-professionals writing the news. I don't like to use that word amateur because we're all we're all subject matter experts in something and we can bring something to the collection of news um, to help inform us all. So that's that's just sort of what I wanted to demonstrate there and also to show you the options. If you are interested in getting involved in citizen journalism, there are many different ways that you can become involved in that. So we get to this question. You know, we, I go through all of this, and you know, we've done different kinds of trainings and, and things, and we've been promoting our website. And we always get to this question. So that's all great. You know, we can get involved with citizen journalism. That's terrific. But um, why does it matter? Um, you know, that's a question I get. So what? So what if you can do this? If you can get out and write and report the news? Does anybody have any any thoughts on why we want to do this or why why it matters? Anyone? Yeah, um, to me it seems like the like the mainstream media is extremely influenced by powerful interests. So we kind of need to end run these guys. And their business model to me seems like it's based on a lot of stuff that's really being taken out nowadays with modern media. So this is like the next thing. So this is a way for people to sort of reassert control over their media? Exactly. Okay, that, that, that's certainly one thing. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, the consolidation of the media? Yeah, absolutely. And the health of the, of the media. Right now we've seen you know, newspapers going under and being economically threatened and everything else. 
There's, there's a narrower range of things that we're talking about. It seems like we're more and more polarized for, for different kinds of media. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. I think it helps people get back to their community, too, to the, yeah. the news that's happening right around you, because the more national the news, that's, we need to yeah. focus more on our communities right now. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. That's certainly what's motivated me to get involved in this. A corollary to that is special yeah. interest groups. That's yeah. You are interested in the national, but you're only interested in some subject matter in the national news, and it's not necessarily going to be covered by mainstream media. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's one of the things we've been trying to do with our service too. Saying, hey, you know, if you have, if you're involved in a nonprofit or some cause, you know, and want, want to write in a journalistic style to, to get your word out, you know, come to us, come, we'll work with you. And, and um, so, you know, I think all of those are really great reasons why City Journalism matters. I've come up with a few here, and I think we've touched on a lot of this. Is that I think the first. Um, and most important thing to accept, if you accept that citizen journalism matters, is that journalism still is essential to democracy. That if we want to be able to make good decisions as a society, that we need to, that we need journalism. Um, and you know, um, going along on that, traditional reporting models are really in danger. And these are just the ones that I thought of off the top of my head. The Post Intelligencer this year went under. Um, they're doing an online-only edition now. The Rocky Mountain News went completely under. The San Francisco Chronicle, it's still not clear whether they're going to survive. And the Boston Globe, they had a high-profile labor um, labor dispute, and it's not clear what the New York Times is going to do with the Boston Globe now. So, I mean, we're losing these resources, these newspapers in various cities, and so something has to come up to you know to take to, to fill the place, to fill those gaps. And you know, experimentation with new new journalism models is really what is next. And citizen journalism is clearly um, one of those those models that that I think has a lot of promise. And and you know, all weekend we've been talking about all kinds of different ways to to create and, and disseminate media. And those that's part of that that experimentation. But there's also another reason out there, and, and that's there's just with with, with the you know, advent of new technologies to disseminate information, there's not too much data out there um, for just journalists uh, to be involved with, uh, with collecting and reporting data. So, you know, just this year, we've seen a couple of different really interesting experiments in crowdsourcing news. The Guardian newspaper, one of my favorite newspapers in the UK, had this great, um, great uh, project where they were looking, they had thousands and thousands of documents of members of parliament expenses. And um, they asked people to log in and start reviewing them. So you see here, and this was just yesterday, they have how many, 246,000 to go, they've reviewed 212,000, and so they had 450 some page, odd pages. Um, and they were using Cuban customers. And if you follow, if you've been following The Guardian or know anything about politics in the UK, They've actually, there have been some scandals that have come out of this project that, that average citizens have been, been getting involved with. And so this is a way that the Guardian is getting through all of this. A um, little closer to home, I, I don't know if any of you have seen ProPublica. ProPublica is a, is a great new sort of public interest uh, website. And they've been asking people to adopt a stimulus project. Um, to sort of keep an eye on, you know, we're now spending billions of dollars across the country. You know, how are we making sure that that's, that's uh, being spent wisely? And, and they don't have enough journalists to get out there and, and professional journalists to get out there and do it. And so they're asking people to, to do that. So you can search in your state. You can find ones here right in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, if you want to get involved in doing that, you, can, you certainly can. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, one thing I, I remember hearing, um, there, there are City council records uh, for their own expenses are in a building, I guess, downtown, and they're you know, in paper form. Some councilmen have aggregated some information and put it on on uh, in spreadsheets. Not everybody, and you know, you could. I mean, that would be something that people could do here: is go downtown, maybe spend a few bucks uh, xeroxing some forms and then looking at them, and then put them on yeah. stories. <coughs> And you've read my mind. <laughs> you've, uh, um, this is exactly what, what, what we're, we're, we're gunning towards. This is one of the things that we certainly want to do. And uh, yeah. we're sort of hoping to recruit many of you, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're interested in doing something like this. And so um, all of this is leads to that. You couldn't have set me up better, you see? Um, uh, 
So, uh, you know, so how can you get involved in this? Um, and this is the part where I, I tell you about what we're involved with here locally. And that is the Pittsburgh Citizen. Um, this is your, we are a new, this is exactly what we are, new hyper-local news platform specifically designed, designed for citizen journalists interested in telling new kinds of stories about public policy and civic affairs in Pittsburgh and Allegheny County. And so really what we're trying to do with this is we're trying to take sort of those principles of citizen journalism that we've gone through, and we're, we're using them to try to fill the gaps in coverage um, that we see here locally in Pittsburgh. Uh, before we started this, we realized there are just so many interesting stories out there, out in the neighborhoods, that you know it's just not economical for the Post Gazette or the Tribune Review or others to, to tell. But they're important to life here in Pittsburgh, to what happens. And you know, more importantly, like Ed said, there, there are a lot of documents and other things and a lot of questions that, that just aren't being asked um, to the government. Um, and that's not an indictment of any of the traditional media sources, but they only have so many people themselves. They're under economic pressure. And they have, you know, I think we're very fortunate in this city to have many good reporters covering City Hall, um, but there just aren't enough of them to, to cover all of the stories that might want to be told. Um, so we launched this service in, on August 29, 2009, so just a little over a month ago. Um, it's published by the Public Square Project, which is, which I'll tell you about in a second. And we're funded in part by the Sprout Fund, which many of you may, may know, community foundation that makes small grants um, to, to nonprofits like ours. So, so this is, a, a public, just to give you a little background, the Public Square Project is, uh, we launched the Public Square Project about uh, a year ago now, I guess we um, formed it in August 2008. And it is a, a, govern, a good government organization, a government watchdog organization that's committed to making government information more accessible and available. And so, you know, some people ask me, well, if that's your mission, why, you know, why did you guys start on this citizen journalism project? And what I always say is, well, that's really what good journalism is all about, really, is making sure that all of the information that we might want to know about what's going on in government is, is getting out there. So we see what we're doing with the Pittsburgh Citizen is complementary to, to that mission. So, so if you'd like to get involved with us, you know, you might think, well, I can start a blog. I can start blogging about uh, uh, you know, different things that are going on in Pittsburgh or things that are happening in my neighborhood. And there are tons of great blogs um, out there in the, uh, in the community. Um, you know, so we knew that we had to add a little bit more value to bring a little bit more to the table to get people interested and, and, and involved with us. And um, so we offer really, I think, really three, three big things that, that you know, if you'd like to come write with us that we offer. We hook you up when you come to us with an editorial mentor, somebody who is a professional journalist who has, um, you know, we have a, a stable of, of working journalists, mostly freelancers, some retired journalists who, um, you know, who we work with to, to mentor the writers. So you're not sort of going through this process by yourself, somebody to bounce ideas off of, to get feedback from, uh, and to generally um, uh, generally help you through the process of, of writing a story. Um, because, you know, we're all used to writing in various ways, but uh, writing in journals to South can sometimes, you know, sometimes a little bit different. Um, and so we, we didn't think it was fair to get people involved in this and, and then not give them the resources to do it. Access to sources. Um, we also do a lot of the lay, help you do a lot of the lay work. If you want to write a story about city council expenses, you know we'll help you track those documents down. You know we'll make we'll help you make right to know act requests if you need if need be, um, and we'll just uh, generally provide that support to you. And also publication. We we have a, a, a site uh, which I'll show you here in a second um, where we'll publish your work. Uh, we will promote your work through our channels, you know, through Twitter, or Facebook, our mailing lists, things like that, so you don't have to do a lot of the promotion on your own. So that's, those are sort of what you can expect from the Pittsburgh Citizen if you'd like to, to be involved in, in writing uh, for our publication. So um, these are the ways. Uh, before we go to, we have about, this is working out pretty well, I want to leave some time at the end for questions, uh, but I want to show you the site as well. Um, and maybe we can combine that with the questions. I'm just going to leave this this up here for a second. Um, maybe when we get to the questions, we'll, we'll put this back up. But there are lots of ways that you can get involved with us. Um, if you'd like to, to be involved with Citizen Journalism, you can go to our site, pittsburghcitizen.org, and there's links all over the place that says, you know, be a journalist, sign up, and 
what we'll do is we'll, once we get your information, we'll have one of our editors contact you directly to, to get started, figure out what you want to work on. You know, they can provide all the, the help and resources that you need to get started. Um, you can also, if you don't, uh, if you don't really want to write for us, but you have a great story idea, there's a place we have we collect story ideas for people who are interested in writing who can't come up with a, a story or, or aren't sure what they want to write. So we can marry the, you know, the the ideas people out there with the, the writers. So you can contribute a story idea uh, to our story bank. If you see something in your neighborhood that uh, that you don't you don't like or you think should be reported on or or should um, should be written about, you know that's a great place to go to say, hey, you guys should check out this. Um, so we'd appreciate any leads. You can also subscribe to our RS feed. You know, check us out on Twitter. Um, you can become a fan of the Public Square Project on Facebook. And of course, join our mailing list at publicsquareproject.org. Uh, um, so those are all the ways that uh, that you can find us essentially. So, hey, before we go to the site, do, does anybody have any questions about it? I know I went through a lot of that fast. It was a lot of information. I have a tendency to talk fast, but yeah. I noticed you didn't include indie media in your list of similar sites. Do you know about indie media? I do know about indie media, okay. absolutely. And um, I think they do terrific work. It wasn't wasn't meant to, to certainly not to be an omission. I think they've done great work. They did a lot of great work um, I, I around G22. Very, I was very involved with them a few years ago. Well then, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Actually, we haven't, I haven't really talked. We haven't really talked to them, but I'd really like to, to get hooked up with them. I think they come at what they're doing um, and what we're doing from a little bit of different angles. But I think we can find there are certainly ways that we can collaborate. You, you also know that they have at this point a radio show that's Rust Belt Radio. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's a great the show. The local chapters, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's where most of the effort is going at this point. And it's a great show. If you guys haven't listened to Rust Belt Radio, I highly recommend checking it out. Two questions that are yeah. sort of related. Um, it just seems like overall, um, you, know, you mentioned a few of the newspapers in the U.S. that are either going under or about to go under. Yeah. But the same trend isn't taking place overseas. So, and by and large, corporate newspapers are yeah. not going under. I think that's more of a fundamental problem with the corporate structure of papers here, and they're expecting 20 plus percent profit year over. Um, so, what yeah. do you think about a strategy to change that, and, and then also? Um, the related point is a strategy to fund uh, investigative journalism because it requires much more expense, you know, particularly if there's travel involved, you need to get reporters from place to place. So yeah. if you are doing, you know, kind of one-off individual journalists, you're helping them report um, a, a strategy for giving the investigative, people that want to do investigative journalism, the additional tools they might need. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. First, take the first part of that question first, the corporate structure. I actually think, and this is my own, you know, personal, um, my own personal bias, I guess. We're, we're a nonprofit, and we think that Can you the future, the oh sure, he'd asked, um, is there something in the structure, the corporate structure of newspapers that needs to change? So many of them are endangered. Is there a different way that we can do do, yeah, is that right? Did I misrepresent that? Yeah, because question? They're, not, they're not losing money. They're just not as profitable as they right. used to be. Exactly. That's precisely it. And I, I think the, I think you're going to see a lot of newspapers become nonprofits. I think that is that could be the future. There's actually a bill in the House of Representatives uh, to allow newspapers to create a new category under 501c3 of the tax code right. to allow newspapers to become uh, nonprofits. I think we're going to see more and more of that happening. Um, we're going to see more and more, I think, so, um, Privately funded um, nonprofit journalism projects like ProPublica come come along. And by the way, the Guardian in in the UK has been a nonprofit for a very long time. Um, they were founded as a nonprofit, um, you know, the early part of the, the 20th century. Um, and so, and and they're fairly healthy, I think. Um, and so, I, I think you're going to see more and more of that happening. I think also you're going to see more and more what's happening at the Post Intelligence. It's a shame that. They went under as a newspaper, but what has emerged from that is 25 journalists are now doing an online-only edition. I think you're going to see a lot of newspapers contracting like that, keeping a, a nice core of, of journalists who will then go out and do a much reduced version. I and mean, they're doing a lot of aggregation on that site too, um, and so I think you're going to see more and more of that. And you had another part of uh, part of the question again. Oh, the investigative yeah, yeah. part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's another topic that we didn't even get into is funding of this. And there are so many interesting uh, new funding models out there. Um, one of them, if you want to check out, it's at uh, spot.us, spot us. And what they do is you can go onto their site, 
you can say, I'd like to see a story. They're just operating in San Francisco now. I'd like to see a story on pollution in the San Francisco Bay. And people, people contribute money, it, and a journalist bids on it and says, oh, I'd like to write that story. I can write that story for $700. And though, so people in the community then start putting in money to, huh. to fund that, those kinds of projects. And it's a fascinating way um, to, to fund. I, they've funded uh, dozens of stories at this point that way. And so it's, it shows sort of, I, I like it because it sort of shows um, that the cost of journalism perhaps should be borne by, by a lot of us, you know, um, either doing it ourselves or, or paying for it in that way. So, so I, I think there are, there are really interesting funding models out there to do investigative journalism, because investigative journalism is really expensive. So, yes, Steve? Well, that's a bunch of questions, just a couple of ideas I'd like to throw out. Mm -hmm. About 30 hours ago, Councilman Bill Peduto stood where you're standing. Yeah. And talked about the fact that he could find candidates for his fantasy football league much more easily than he could find things like how to get a permit from city government. Mm -hmm. So he, he asked us to think about how what we could do to help make information and uh, functions of government more transparent, accessible on the web. Mm -hmm. If you accept the premise that good governance is directly affects the quality of life in a community, and you accept the premise that a lack of journalism, policing government is going to is going to be a negative, then this is an opportunity to both create a better quality of life and possibly contribute to what Peduto is trying to do, and that is increase that transparency by mm -hmm. a level of scrutiny and involvement that makes it difficult for the people in power to resist releasing information. An interested citizenry contributing to better life for everyone. Absolutely, and I, I think you've said it more eloquently than I, perhaps I could here. I, I think that's absolutely right, and, that, and that's part of what we're trying to do here with with uh, our project. Is there a question? Did, did I answer that? No, question? Yeah, Sorry, just yeah. I mean, it wasn't really a question. Yeah. I just wanted to make a statement and see if we could bounce it off of people and see if yeah. that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you limiting this to stories, or are you open to other ways of transmitting oh, information? Absolutely. Um, you know. Photographic essays, video, anything like that. We are completely open. And we built this site. Maybe this is a good time. I, I at least want to show you a little bit about the site. Um, we built the site to incorporate all of those tools. And um, so, well, thank you, Lane. And you know, when Elaine brings it up, we think we've done a pretty good job of making it a, a pretty attractive site on the outside. But really, what is interesting is is um, what's going on in the back end. There's all kinds of collaboration tools and different ways that, that you can get involved in, in doing this. So we actually just did a, uh, a collaboration with the Coro Center for Civic Leadership where a lot of their fellows did, did stories around the G20. So you are, we're getting our new stories and uh, moving our new journalists through the process. So you'll be seeing more and more stories. But right now, a lot of the stories up there are, are about the G20. Um, you'll also notice. Um, Pitt's blog up there. We're also aggregating, we're starting to aggregate um, blog content that has to do with public policy and civic affairs in Pittsburgh. So if any of you write your own blog and would like a little more exposure or another place to, to see your work displayed, please talk to me after the session because we'd love to talk to you about aggregating some of your content on the site. So, um, so let me log in so I can just kind of show you some of the features that we built in, into, into the site. This is a Drupal-based site for anybody who who is, um, you know, knows a little bit about more about than me about content management systems. Um, but there's a particular reason why we decided to do it that way. Over here. So if you were signed up, we would uh, we would give you sort of a journalist designation, and you could I'll show you. I'll show you some of the things that you can do. Get my name right there. Okay, so this is sort of the dashboard, the back end of what you, you'd see when you log in to the site. And one of the, the, um, the features that we came up with is that if you're working on a story, we've come up, and I, I, unfortunately I don't think we're going to have time to go through all of this, but we've come up with something called the Virtual Reporter's Notebook here. And this is just a place on the site where you can you can be in to, to, to type your notes. There's different kind of note boxes here. Um, you have all kinds of places where you can have images, audio, video, and uh, 
you know, the audio has to be somewhere on the on the site on on the internet. You can grab it off of it. Um, video right now we currently only support YouTube, but we're we're hoping to add a few more modules on to to do some some additional video. As some people you know prefer to use Vimeo or others, um, and so you this is this is the way you construct a story. You can also I haven't looked at this for a while. Um, from, a, uh, from a journalist perspective, I'm looking at more from an administrator. Let's say you are, um, let's see if there's a notebook here. Okay, this, is somebody, we, this is somebody's notebook that they have used to publish this story. So if we just take a look at that really quickly, there's a way to where you can. Once you're done, let's say you, you've created this this uh, this notebook. It's very easy then to wh what we can do is then once you're ready to publish the story, there's a button that says publish story, and it sort of repopulates it into all of the different story fields, um, and it makes it makes it really easy to uh, you know to um, to publish. And what it does then is that it goes into a queue where the, an editor has to approve it. Uh, once your editor approves it, then it goes live on the site. So. And that was a really quick. There's a, there's a lot of different functions here that we could get into. So, but we are hoping this fall to do an additional sort of training on on the site, in addition to doing a writing workshop, which we did earlier this year. So please look for that, and it would be great to, uh, to have some of you come. So that's really all I have um, in my presentation. But I'd be happy to throw it open to more questions. Anybody? Yes, Steve. We, we, we talked uh, yesterday about uh, the folks that were involved in the protests in G20 mm -hmm. that were using Twitter to update. Yeah. Do you see something like that functioning with your site? Yeah, actually, you know, we are, we have done this, and we um, we have for Hot House, actually. And are you guys familiar with Hot House? It's the Sprout Fund's annual benefit party. And this is, we launched our site during Hot House, which was, which was on, um, August 29th, and we actually did a tweet stream uh, for that, and we intend to, to do that for various events that happen around, and we're looking at ways to do it sort of on a more regular basis. If people are out, they see something on, on Twitter, they, if they tag it with, you know, PGH Citizen or Pittsburgh Citizen or something, then it'll show up on our tweet stream on the site. That's currently in development right now. If you click on the, if you click on the story link, um, and then I think it's in the story. It's still up there, but you know, we're 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 doing some additional development to make it more more attractive. But that's what we did to demonstrate it. We got people to to tweet. Um, and over here on this side, we had some people who were sort of involved with our project, um, and they got sort of like uh, um, higher billing here. Bram, I don't know if a lot of you know Bram, but Bram was helped us tweet. The uh, hot house, and so that's why you see Bram are up here, and uh, a lot of these see some of the tweets from the hot house coming up. So, so we're going to be using this more and more, Steve, um, to to cover different kinds of events. And like I said, we're looking away to to make it more regular. If you're if you're out, you see see something you want to report, tag it with citizen, PGA citizen, and and you know eventually it'll and we'll have it set up on our site where you'll just be able to look at our homepage. So that's definitely in development. And also, if um, before you guys go, we have if you want some more information about the um, about the Pittsburgh Citizen, we at Hot House. One of the things that we did um, in order to create some interest and also to tie together um, to tie what we were doing to uh, printing of newspapers, we we brought in this um, old 19th century letterpress, and we letterpressed um, these cards. Um, we had a little plate made, and it explains about the project, and um, it has all of, all of the information on here that you need to get started, and where to get started, and where to find us. And uh, so please grab, we have, we went crazy at Hot House, and we have hundreds and hundreds of them left. So please, please take one. Um, they're kind of cool, just to take a look at too. Um, so.
Anybody, any other questions? Yeah. Um, I think for citizen journalism to be credible, you kind of have to know certain amounts of style and technique and yeah. basic journalism. So do you have any suggestions on yeah. where to go or how sure. to cultivate those skills? Sure. One thing you can do, you can look on our site on Public Square Project site. We have a blog post about the, the um, about the uh, the workshops that we did this March, and we put up all of our materials up there. Um, we were having some problems posting the um, PowerPoint presentation up presentations up there, but um, we, we can also send. The, I can also email those to you. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, it is kind of difficult. It is intimidating when you say that for yeah. people to come and say, "Well, I don't know how to write a lead, or I don't even know what that is," or well, you're you know, name out there. You want right? To exactly, exactly. And you know what? That's why we sort of hook you up with a, a mentor and an, an editor, somebody who, who is a journalist and can sort of help you through that process. Um, but at this point, I wouldn't worry so much about um, about the quality either. I mean, I, I'm certain you guys can all write. Um, something that we would be more than happy to publish. The challenge for us is getting people to just overcome that and do it. And they find, oh, this once I do it, oh, this isn't so bad. And you know, they work with their editor and they they really get hooked on doing it. And so that's that's what we would say first: give it a try, and um, you know, we'll we'll be sure to, to 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 help you make sure you you feel comfortable with the final product. Yes. Steve, yeah. Another you? source: the AP publishes a series of books from a style guide through a, bit, a variety of photojournalism and how to report and so on. Yeah. Books. They're all cheap. They're available on the web at Amazon or at the AP yeah. site. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've been meaning to do a more extensive blog post. I think this will spur me to do that. <laughs> a more extensive blog post to sort of aggregate a lot of the resources that I found. Um, I know that there are, for instance, the the Knight Foundation has a series of tutorials. On doing citizen journalism, so I will. That, that is my to do for this week is to make sure I get those up there on the site so that people can see that um, about sort of you know how do you interview and a lot of that was covered in, in the trainings that we do as well, um, and so so I'll, I'll be sure to get those up there. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. And mm -hmm. Apologies if, if this was on there somewhere and I missed it, but um, so just um, anticipating into the future. When citizen journalism becomes extremely popular and yeah. a ton of people writing, you know, kind of what happened to video or to uh, YouTube on the video front, mm -hmm. where there's so much out there and quality control is an issue. Um, right. Do you foresee any kind of mechanism in place to let you know the viewers, in addition to the mentors, write some of the, rate someone's writing style? I guess the style mm -hmm. um, in combination with the, you know their bias or non-bias things right. like that, just so people don't get lost in so much information that they don't get anything out of it. Right, or or you know, other people have read this and it's not worth your time to read or yeah. something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how that one site that we should ground report, that's how ground report works. Okay. And that's how they, they figure out their compensation. Um, and we hope, we really hope to get to the point where, where we can get enough people doing this, we get enough interest that we, we're in, our, in sort of fundraising mode right now where we get enough money in where we might be able to offer some compensation decision journalists. And we think that that's probably the best the best model, you know, um, to try to give some sort of uh, feedback that way based on how many people read it. Um, because like I said, this is this is sort of a, um, it's, it, it's time, cons it can be time consuming, it can be fun, but you know, it, it's it's probably more sustainable and most sustainable when, when people are doing it for some, some amount of conversation, not a lot, but, but some. So that's, that's sort of what we're looking for in the future. All right then. Well, I, I thank you so much for uh, for your terrific questions and uh, for your attention. I really appreciate it. It's really been an honor to uh, to present here at PodCamp this year. And um, if you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to to talk to me. Please come and take some of these, and also visit visit the site and uh, sign up. And we'd love to we'd love to have you um, become a journalist. So thank you.